I'm here with David Freeberg at the Structural Dynamics Lab of the National Research Council out near the airport. This is a place where they take big heavy vehicles and shake them around really hard so that they can find out what a lifetime's wear and tear is going to look like in just a few weeks or even months. What are we, what are we going to see, David? Our Structural Dynamics Lab right in here. Well, let's go take a look. If our customer wants his vehicle to last, say, 30 years, he's hardly going to take it out in the backyard and run it around for 30 years before he decides it's okay. So what we do is um, take the vehicle into the field, measure what it would see in a typical day, and then compress it, or actually run the vehicle over that course and uh, record the acceleration or vibration levels that it sees during the, its usage, and then go through that data and take out all but the very roughest sections. And then uh, create a, um, we call a drive file, which is uh, a time history, if you like, of the vertical displacement of the wheels on the vehicle. And we take it back into our lab and we recreate that time history. Now, by taking out all the stuff that wasn't rough, we can compress it in time so that say two minutes of operation here might be worth a day of operation out in the field. So we can run a 30 year test in a matter of a couple of weeks. What we've done is found local quarries and um, that look about the right, right roughness and we've mapped them with a LiDAR flying on a small remote controlled helicopter. And then we uh, plan out a route through the quarry and from the LiDAR data, we can actually tell exactly what the time history of the bouncing of the wheels on the, as the vehicle rolls over it. So now we're able to, to uh, ascertain exactly how hard we're, we're bouncing the vehicle as we drive it on the, 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 that road. And once we drive it on that, set, that course, we can take it back uh, here, compress the file that we collected, and run it on our equipment for drill about, we are about to show you. Okay. We have uh, displacement sensors to tell us how the, uh, like the exact position of the, mm -hmm. the uh, wheel pan, and then we have accelerometers mounted on the vehicle. So I'm going to give a signal to the guy upstairs if he can you. Ask him to turn it on. There we go. Okay. He just gave us the thumbs up. So this will run, I believe, for about two minutes. Okay. And uh, you'll see that it's probably not something you want to do to your uh, car. Have you ever sat inside while they do this? No, uh, our safety guys don't, wouldn't like that. <laughs> I think the parking brake is on. We can uh, actually move those up and down by like uh, plus minus six inches. Wow. So this is a, a very minor course. Okay, so you can have one going up six inches while the other wheel is going down six inches, like yeah. a really, really bumpy road. Yeah, one okay. can go up and down, like on, on each one, it can go up and down by six inches. So it's like running over a whole series of railway tracks or, or railway ties or something. Yeah, now this is a military vehicle. I understand you do civilian vehicles too? Yeah, we've uh, done uh, uh, buses and some trucks, and uh, I think we've had a trailer in here, like a semi-trailer, the back of a semi-trailer. And we do, um, one of the nice things about the lab is it's completely reconfigurable. So we do all kinds of uh, non-standard tests. It's, it's our greatest strength and maybe our greatest weakness because it means that we have to spend a lot of time setting up each time we do what should for some labs would be a very normal test like a okay. standard test but since we can do just about anything you're custom designing the test yeah we have yeah, to do so each one as, as it comes in so it takes a little bit more time do you get surprises or do they pretty much pass oh uh, hmm. I'm I'm gonna put the number at about a 20% pass rate 20% pass rate because normally we're testing vehicles very early in their uh, their design cycle mm -hmm. so, and they're looking for problems and they're, they're in, often intentionally pressing the envelope as hard as they can. Okay. So we get a lot of cases where 
you know, they, they have to put in just, it, it, the test, the failures aren't catastrophic, but they might get a, a cracked frame or okay. a, some broken part, and That's then something. they go back and reinforce so it. So the manufacturer again. goes back, redesigns, improves the shock yeah, of the exactly, system. Yeah. Okay, so they learn from it before it hits yeah. the market. What if somebody says to you, okay, the United States is right next door, they must have lots of testing equipment. Why don't we just sit back and let them do it all? Why spend this money? Surprisingly, uh, probably, Half our business here comes from the States, hmm. at least half, maybe more. And uh, it's this facility, because of its flexibility in a purely economic sense, is uh, you have a hard time approach, uh, justifying that approach. Hmm. But the flexibility is something that most like commercial facilities don't have. Flexibility so, in the sense, for instance, you're, you're designing your tests that aren't cookie cutter tests? Exactly. It looks really precarious there. I mean, you've got this thing up three or four meters in the air. Does it ever fall off? <laughs> <coughs> I and mean, you're shaking it hard. It could. <laughs> and we, so we have to be very, very careful. <laughs> we could easily launch it off if we made a mistake. And so we tend to, we're awake when we're doing that. <laughs> Measure <laughs> twice, test once. Yeah, it's, yeah exactly. And it, it keep, keeps, us, uh, keeps us on our toes. Fantastic. This has been a wonderful tour. Thanks oh, very much. No problem.